Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the analysis of this channel and I trust you are well. Now you must have noticed that every time we start uh, our analysis, you know, we always go through some a recap of our previous analysis and in our previous analysis, we delved into the details revolving around Azimio's plan to submit a presidential petition to the Supreme Court and we also talked about the various Supreme Court options and we talked about the Supreme Court options in our previous analysis. So that's what our previous two analyses entailed. Now before we delve deep into today's analysis that is touching entirely on Joe Muscheru's Joe Mucheru's uh, move and Chebukati's flip-flopping action, especially when he made the statements that he made yesterday, let us first take a quick recap on some of those tweets that have made a very big impact in this analysis. So let's talk about Mutai Nguni as the first tweet. So there is a tweet that Mutai Nguni posted on 15th. This is what Mutai Nguni said. I said that the election will not happen on August 9th. It will start on August 9th. In 21 days, the Supreme Court will rule if Chebukati did the right thing. If he was wrong, we have to do a re-election in November and this is why Uhuru wanted BBI changes. That is the first tweet, ladies and gentlemen. Now, a second tweet, you know, still on Mutai Nguyen. I'm, a, I'm proud, this is now was posted on 17th, that's yesterday. I'm, a, I'm proud to be Kenyan, but I will be more proud if the election is nullified within, with no violence. As Mew has a good case but they are reciting poetry to a man holding a sword. I warned them in May that the deep state will not deliver. Laziness at the Supreme Court will be a disaster. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a strict message to Azmi One Kenya lands to not sleep. It's from what Mutenguni has said in this Twitter post, that I warned them in May that the deep state will not deliver. You see, from what Mutanguni is saying, looks like Mutanguni is saying that the deep state wanted to use power to force Chebukati into announcing their preferred candidate. That is what Mutanguni is trying to mean. That he warned, as the me one Kenya lands, not to rely on that to strategize on other ways. Of forcing this win so what he's saying again is like Kenya Kwanza took that advice Kenya Kwanza took the advice and did the opposite of what Azimio and Kenya Lance did Kenya Kwanza relied heavily on the ruling of 2017 and decided to invest in Chebukati <laughs> so perhaps that's why you see the form 34s <laughs> came the way they came and Chebukati is so confident that even if they are calculated again, they are summed up, they will still give the same result that he produced. Chebukati is so confident. Ladies and gentlemen, now before we delve, you know, into the analysis of today's channel, I'd like to first of all welcome first time viewers to this channel and to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like, hit the notification bell for purposes of future uploads so that you get notifications every time an upload is made. Now let's go straight to Joe Mushiru because Joe Mushiru forms the basis of our today's analysis. I was just giving a recap of the two Twitter posts on uh, Mutai Nguni's sentiments but the, 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 the analysis of today's session revolves around Joe Mushiru's action. It is what has it that Joe Mushiru, the ICTCS, had engaged a Chinese IT firm to do an extensive audit on the IBC 
system in order to get an audit trail that will consequently reveal any malpractice, any inconsequence, anything that could have led to Chebukati's illegal announcement of the results. So the deep state could be now trying to fight back, but from another angle. This could be now a way of trying to gather evidence that will force the courts to call for a rerun, one, or to call for a fresh election. So a rerun, that means maybe it will be that maybe the courts will determine that the threshold met does not allow for a round one win, and that calls for a rerun, runoff. That's it. Now for re-election, is just a fresh election where by now 50 plus 1 must count. <laughs> so CS Usheru, remember in the past engagements, CS Mushero has not has not had a rosy relationship with the Kenya Kwanza. You know that the, the likes of the, the likes of CS Matiangi and Mushero have never had a rosy relationship with Kenya Kwanza. So it is alleged that the move has caused the discomfort among the three the three commissioners of IBC, that is Chebukati being the senior, Guli, and Morjon. Yeah. So they are worried that should John Musher uh, do this audit in uh, with the, the Chinese firm, then some of those illegal logging ins will be unearthed and this will cause a serious problem to Chebukati team and it can cause cast doubt as to whether Chebukati is really qualified to handle any other re election perhaps if the courts decide that there is supposed to be a re-election that they should they trust Chebukati with that helm of IEBC I think this is the reason why the discomfort in IEBC now is growing and Joe Mosheru is really making these three gentlemen have sleepless nights at the moment. <laughs> so, if you go through my previous analysis, I indicated that there was a time where the deep set moment is supposed to come. So perhaps this action of John Mosheru could be now the deep state moment. Remember, Chebukati cited intimidation. That could have been another deep set moment. But now, whatever Joe Mosher is doing of ordering an audit trail, to, of ordering an audit of the system, I mean the system audit, in a bid to come up with an audit trail to reveal this logging in. Remember, in, in the previous analysis, again, I talked about that chaos that, ero ar that, that arose in the midnight. That was around, I think it was around, it was somewhere on the, on, on the eve of... of uh, it was the eve of Saturday, uh, Saturday Sunday night, whereby it was alleged that Moses Sunkuli, and you know Moses Sunkuli, the, the, the director of voter registration, was alleged to have been in the company of Davis Chirichiri. Those are from the results of the phone triangulation that revealed that he, they were closer. So this audit trail of Joe Mosheru could unearth even those logging ins and the, the loca location of logging ins because you know some of these logging ins when they are well documented they even give you the location of where someone attempted to log into the system who attempted what time they attempted the location of attempting you know and what was done the audit trail that is now the report of the system audit so perhaps this is the reason why Chebukati could be making baseless statements at the moment, statements that are making him look like a flip-flopper, you know, in quotes, flip-flopper. Because Chebukati said <laughs> in a press statement that Juliana Chirera and his and her colleagues wanted to force a runoff. Mind you, in the press statement that Ju Juliana Chirera released, he cited some fractions, you know, of course, those math fractions that Kenyans have made fun of. He cited as those as to having been the reason why around one win wasn't going to be possible. So what Juliana said is that perhaps Joe, uh, Chebukati 
forced around one win. That was the bone of contention, if I'm not wrong, because they disputed the, 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 the final results which were added onto the existing results. And mind you, I woke up at around uh, 3 a.m., you know, before the announcement. The, 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 you remember the announcements were made on the on the Monday. Let me let me confirm the date for you. It was on Monday, uh, on, on the Monday of 15th. So I say now no, the the early morning, around 3 a.m., 4, 4, 4 a.m., I went online and I could see that the gap between William Ruto and Raila Molodinga was around 20,000. But then this gap kept reducing. I think by the time it was 20,000, there were around 51 constituencies which had not been tallied. So now the gap reduced to around 100,000. I think that's when now Chibukati decided not to now announce these results anymore. By that time, the constituencies were around 30 to 28. So now, these 28 constituencies are the reason why Juliana Cherera and uh, the colleagues are decrying Chibukati's numbers. Because it's there, you, we talked about it, that Chibukati decided to now be scarce, not, a, not available for the other commissioners. So, that was the moment Juliana and the team decided no, 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 no. This can't be the case. We are not being shown or told how the numbers have been tabulated, calculated, and how Chebukati has arrived at that statistic that he has. So that was the reason why they started now to differ. But we don't want to talk about that because already everybody seems to know about that. We don't know about the true facts, but these facts we believe will be tabled in court. But again, when Chebukati said that Juliana Cherera and the team wanted to force, force a runoff, it is only trying to confirm the allegations of the, 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 the rebelling four commissioners headed by Juliana Cherera as the vice chair of IEBC. So what Chebukati did was merely confirm that whatever that was being told, told uh, was said to the public could be true that there could have been a runoff, but you, Chebukati, decided not to call a runoff and decided to award a round on win to William Samoy Ruto, the current presidential elect. And again, there is a scenario where after Chebukati rushing into announcing the winner, again the following day, Chebukati didn't even give room for anything. He decided to gazette the presidential elect because the law requires the same. He couldn't even wait for another day, an extra day to do it. I don't know, because maybe probably he could have had a court order not to gazette William Samoy Ruto. So perhaps that's the reason why Chebukati rushed into do, making that move. So Chebukati is currently being a flip-flopper. If you look at the case of these gubernatorial elections for Kakamega and Mombasa, Chibukati has again decided to postpone them indefinitely. So the question that most people are beginning to ask themselves, now this current governor, the current governor's term will, will have to be extended. That means now, the, the, if the election are to be handled at an indefinite date, that could even be in November or December, because he did not give a specific date to where these elections will be handled. Now again, that that is another last blunder, blunder, not even a last. Now, that is another blunder from Chibukati. Now, the governor who will win, his term will start from where? Which day? Which date? And end in which date? That is another question that Chibukati needs to ask himself before he makes such a declaration. Now, ladies and, ge now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to wind up there. But if we look at whatever details that I've, that I've shared, then you realize these are grave issues that need addressing. Chebukati needs total fixing at the moment. Now, I'd like to leave you with a question. Do you think the audit trail report that Joe Mosheru will get from the system audit will help as the Miwan Kenya Alliance in arguing their case, or could it be that that to be used by the DCI to arrest IEBC 
staffs who committed the offense. Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps if you're watching our channel for the first time, you haven't subscribed, take a moment and support us by subscribing. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up. And for any regular viewer who's not subscribed, please just take a moment and subscribe. We need you to subscribe. We need you to give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so that we can be updating you on real time basis every time we have and some such such videos now once again i like to say stay safe stay blessed until you meet again